Here we have a follow-up to the walk-around video that we did with Mark on his 1961 Oldsmobile F85 Deluxe. In this video, we're going to take his F85 Deluxe for a drive, and you can experience the Roto-High Dramatic firsthand and see how it shifts in his vehicle. You also get a sense of how great the ride is on this 1961 Senior Compact. It's actually very shocking. The 61 F85 Deluxe you're about to take a ride in is equipped with the 155 horsepower Rockette aluminum V8 that displays 215 cubic inches. You can see how Oldsmobile discussed it in the F85 brochure. Interestingly, they say proved V8 design, but it was an aluminum block engine, and it did have some issues, although it was relatively reliable in the non-jet fire applications. This engine was also used in the Buick Special and optional in the Pontiac Tempest in a number of years and was eventually sold to Rover, where it became a pretty famous V8 overseas. It also formed the basis for the now famous 3.8 liter 3800 Buick V6 when Buick introduced in 1962 a V6 cast iron version of the engine in an attempt to lower the cost of the Special. You'll notice in the bottom right of the brochure, it talks about how this vehicle has the new hydromatic with accelerator action. 1961 saw the introduction of the roto hydromatic or the Slim Jim transmission. You can see in the brochure how relatively small it is. It did endow this F85 with a relatively small hump in the floor. That's about the only positive that I can really say about the roto hydromatic It had some pretty terrible shift patterns with a very short first gear, but then the one to two shift on these roto hydromatics is very noticeable where the transmission not only upshifts, but also engages full mechanical lockup. So the engine really dies down in RPMs from one to two, kind of similar to what the old school hydromatic would do on the two to three shift. Although these roto hydromatics are far less reliable than the original hydromatic was. There were two versions of the roto hydromatic, the model five and the more heavy duty model 10. This F85 has a lighter weight Model 5 transmission. Some of the full-size cars, like the Oldsmobiles from 1961 through the mid-60s, as well as short wheelbase Pontiacs, use the Model 10 transmission. So be on the lookout if you want some of those short wheelbase Catalinas and Grand Prix from Pontiac in the early 1960s, and check to make sure you don't have this Roto-Hydromatic transmission or that it's been recently serviced. In any case, let's take a ride with Mark in his F85. You can experience the one to two shift. And also, one good thing I guess I can say about these transmissions was that in third gear, they did have a 60% mechanical lockup, so they were relatively efficient. Let's take a drive. Here we are in the F85 now. We're going to experience we the great uh, Roto Hydromatic. The Roto Hydromatic, yes, and how highly dramatic it is to drive with a Roto Hydromatic. A uh, little, little interesting tidbit, of course. The GM at the time was Pernal not. slur. Yeah, it's a, it's a pndzler. Yeah, it's a reverse basically. It has um, low and reverse right next to each other, which is uh, kind of unusual. And uh, it wasn't until the mid '60s that they really standardized the quadrants to the familiar uh, Prindle. And uh, interesting, parking brake is here. It doesn't have a foot pedal. Uh, other than that, it has a standard Fisher body pull-out knobs oh, yeah. for the uh, for the cowl vents um, that are always quite welcome. So let's go. Um, here we are. Very. This is second now, and we're we're we're, <laughs> we're, 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 we're already in third now. This oh is, really? We are in third. This is this is the uh, high range now. Yeah. So. When, I think it was Motor Trend, or who tested the uh, 61? You sent me a copy of the... Was oh, it Car Life. Car Life. And they recorded something like 14 seconds, 0 to 60, um, because of the really slow uh, transmission action, because the cars were much quicker with the manual. Boy, the ride is great, though. The ride is fantastic. The ride is really comfortable. It's super soft. You get some boominess, but... Yes, and that's probably due to A, unibody, and B, old rubber, because a lot of these cars rely on the rubber mounting and bushings for silence and on a 62 year old car you don't have the same boy it's compliance for, for it getting, floats. it's uh it, it, i forgot how well it rides though it rides beautifully they were trying to emulate the full-size car ride to get customers to accept these smaller vehicles so they overdid it a bit because this car is a very very soft very very soft
I think the transmission shifts smoother than last time when I drove it since you had it rebuilt. Now, yes. that's not to say that it's smooth. Yes, it's a, it's you could feel the bogginess in second gear. Uh, it's it's a little, especially at low speeds, it's kind of jerky because it's revving very low. And the car comes much more alive at speed. Very slow <laughs> shift. And you can feel that slight can. jerk. <laughs> and now we're already in third. Uh, the third, the two, three is not very perceptible, but the uh, one, two certainly is extremely perceptible and very slow. You feel like you're sitting so low to the ground <laughs> because we are to a modern car. Yeah, we are. My knees basically right up here and the seats all the way back, of course. And here we are. We are actually in high gear, um, very boggy. It's uh, you can tell that it's it's still in third third gear. Well, the engine's very quiet. It's though. It's extremely quiet, and the engine is actually a delight. I, I enjoy it. It's uh, it's quite peppy. It's uh, this gentleman does not know where he wants to go, but he's decided. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's got uh, good, good yeah, up. Yeah. And now we are, you know, 45. Actually, this is a 35, so I probably shouldn't provoke it because I saw a cop out on the road earlier. But, um, yeah, it's right. very... It is an amazingly smooth ride, though. Fantastic. It's super buttery soft and extremely pleasant on the not always perfect Michigan roads. Wow. Yeah, it's very vibration free. It's it's a lovely. I didn't remember it riding this well. Oh yeah, it's quite nice. I'm surprised you don't drive it more. I do drive it, but I'm a little worried that I put too many miles on this car because this is all original. And how many are? See, yeah. this is this is the shift to second. This was very <laughs> slow, and now you can feel the. Yeah, it kind of yeah. it's foggy until yeah. It, and now we're on third. Wow. But overall, not bad. No. It's just that it's not as drivable at lower speeds and in city traffic, which makes the car less pleasant to drive by classic car standards because that's kind of where we use them. We're not really going on these very long trips and we're usually in our local vicinity. So driving this car on um, in crowded city traffic, it's not a delight, especially with the heavy steering. And there's a bit more work involved uh, compared to, let's say, the 59 Chevy or something much more modern like the 76 Oldsmobile, which is drivable like a modern car. This one requires a lot more attention and with motorists being very unforgiving and impatient today, when you have an, an old car, you get a lot of situations where people cut you off or get impatient or, or create some kind of other moment of menace or threat. But boy, the ride is better than some of the body on frame cars. Oh, it's sensational. It's better than the 70s era oh, body on frame cars. It's very, yeah. very smooth. Yep. Very smooth. A horrible fly here. Wants to go for the ride. Again, very slow shift to second. And here we have some broken uh, concrete. You can barely feel the strips. It's almost imperceptible as the car goes over the cracks in the concrete. You don't feel them. Didn't you have the shocks replaced and you went back to the ones that were This on? has the original shocks and they're probably rather dead, but they're, I don't have any issues with tire them. flat spotting. Horrible. They're still functional. Uh, nothing today can create the riding comfort of the older shocks, which are very soft. And the new shocks make the ride way too busy. So I really haven't resolved the problem yet, solved the problem of replacing the shocks in this car which eventually has to happen. Man, what a great, great ride. Yep. And here again, very boggy. We're in second gear. And now we're there in second go. gear. Oh, I see. It's, yeah, it just takes a while. It for takes it. a while. And, and part of it is some friction in the linkage, the, the, the uh, you know, the uh, throttle linkage and everything is a bit, a bit stiff and tight, needs frequent lubrication. Uh, but yeah, it's it's difficult to drive this car as, as smoothly and elegantly as a... Well, just come to a complete stop for any corner. <laughs> it's pretty much like an unsynchronized first gear. It's <laughs> it kind of like an unsync. That's right. Got to come to a complete stop before it engages.
Yeah, you hear the bumps, but you really don't feel them at all. No. Yeah. And I've got the tires pumped to 30 or 32. Normally, I only run 28, but this car is so soft that I, I run them a little higher. Um, but uh, it's very pleasant. And it's certainly not a handler, but none of the old cars really are. Um, wow. But it's, it's definitely a comfortable ride. Well, thanks for taking us on a ride, Mark. Really appreciate oh, it. Oh, my pleasure. Okay, well, you have a collection of 1961 General Motors compact and senior compact brochures here. Well, it's actually not really a big collection. I just oh. have the folders for the 61 Buick Special and the F85, and this is all I could get. I don't think there was a deluxe brochure for this car, and there may have been, but this is pretty much all you can find. So this one is an early one. It has the wide white walls, and uh, I think there's a bunch of sources online that show the later retouched version. Here is the all vinyl deluxe interior. Uh, mine has the cloth, here's a cloth version. They don't even show the standard interior on this brochure. And, and here is the Rocket V8 with the accelerator hydromatic action. Um, big car action, small car thrift. Well, <laughs> you know, thrift definitely. And yeah, the problem was right here. Right there was the problem. Um, Proved V8 design, well, actually the engine wasn't that bad. They had some issues with the uh, cylinder liner uh, movement in the block because they were casting the cylinder liner simultaneously to the aluminum and they had some kind of technique apparently where the process avoided galvanic corrosion and they got a, supposedly a nice mm. firm uh, seating of the cylinder liners and apparently that seating could come loose if you had like little micro cracks or something in the in the uh, casting. But by and large, the engine wasn't that bad and, and Rover did a lot of modifications later on uh, to make it a really, really good engine that did uh, very good service for decades. And then by the 1990s, um, it became rather obsolete. It's a push rod V8. It's two valves per cylinder. It couldn't keep uh, pace with the newer V8 developments and they had to eventually replace it. But it was actually a very serviceable, and very good engine for them for many decades. and. It would have been a good engine and serviceable engine for GM too, but the manufacturing costs were way higher than the traditional cast iron box. So that's why one. Buick introduced that cast iron V6 in the special, because yeah. they wanted to lower the price. Exactly, point. exactly. So, uh, and then of course, by 1964, the uh, so-called senior compacts became intermediates and in conventional cars with uh, cast iron engines, body on frame design, and they were bigger and more mature cars to the customer and much found much more acceptance because the uh, high development costs and all the innovations that were in the original 1961 versions, they forced some thrifting, which is your field, your territory that you're very good at. Thrifting's the, good. The finance uh, specialist, but uh, it made the cars seem like less of a value than what the average customer would accept. And that's probably the main reason why they weren't very successful in the beginning. And then the mechanical issues and problems, especially with the rotohydromatic, were the reason why these cars disappeared so quickly by the late 1960s, they were basically gone. It's too bad, I love the 63 Grand Prix, but I do not want a road high dramatic no. transmission car. Well, the, the, the Model 10 is better. It's not. It's still not a great transmission, but the Model 10 is better. It's a bit more so robust. So it'll, it'll fail after 40,000, as opposed to 30,000. Yes, I had a, well, I had a Grand Prix, a 64 Grand Prix with a Roto, and it was over 100,000 miles, but it did fail. Well, wow, this is the trunk is big. Trunk, trunk is, is huge. Yeah. Twenty five point five. Yeah. That's bigger than a lot it's of full size cars. Absolutely, yeah. It was it wow. was very well. I mean, they took full advantage of the unit body construction, and uh, these cars are quite well laid out. They're they're fairly efficiently laid out, and you see the front overhang is very short, and this is a nice um, reference. The nineteen sixty brochure. You see the design element I was talking about, and then here is the nineteen sixty one full size car as the front end. So this car really is a perfect combination of all these design elements. Um, very much uh, a 1960 Oldsmobile on the side with a 61 full-size Oldsmobile in the front. And another thing that I really like about these cars is they had a very, very handsome station wagon, which uh, that was uh, one of the pluses, that it was a very attractive station wagon. So sometimes um, the different versions are more or less successful. I think this car was at least visually uh, just as successful as a station wagon as it was mm. in the sedan. Form. I don't think I've ever seen a station wagon in the flesh. 
I have seen several Buick station wagons. I've seen the a Tempest wagon. And okay. I've seen a Tempest wagon. I've never seen the F-85 wagon. And again, it'll be a long time before you see one because these cars literally are gone. There's so few left. Mm. Very cool.